What attributional biases impact our judgments of other people? Before we cover the integration process, let's examine some of the attributional biases that affect our judgments of other people. All these biases are mental shortcuts or cognitive heuristics that save us time and effort in our mental processing. We are more likely to rely on them when we are tired, stressed in a hurry, not feeling well, or intoxicated. But they usually occur without our awareness, and they can operate simultaneously. The problem is that these shortcuts introduce biases and inaccuracies that prevent us from seeing reality as it is. As you learn about each of the biases, take a moment to think of your own example to help you encode the information and remember it later. One of the most studied biases is the fundamental attribution error. This is our tendency to overestimate the role of personal factors and underestimate the role of situational factors when it comes to explaining a target's social behaviors. For example, one of the new employees at work isn't performing very well. You conclude they are incompetent and fail to consider situational variables that may be playing a role. Maybe they have a newborn baby at home and aren't getting enough sleep at night. Or maybe they just lost someone close to them to a sudden illness. Or maybe you said something to discourage them. We may even commit this error when we know how the situation plays a role. One explanation for this error is that because people are more salient to us than situations, we pay more attention to the target and let the situation fade into the background. Social psychologists have published evidence that individualistic cultures are more prone to this error than collectivistic cultures. For instance, in the 1980s, Joan Miller asked people from the U.S. and India to make attributions about behaviors they had observed. The graph on the left shows that American participants made more personal attributions than Indian participants. The graph on the right shows that Indian participants made more dispositional attributions than American participants. Another bias is the availability heuristic. This is the tendency to rely on information that is readily available to estimate the probability of an event. For example, imagine a person reads about a fatal plane crash in the news and then refuses to fly. Statistically, plane crashes are rare about 1 in 10 million. But since they just read about one, it is readily available in their memory and clouds their judgment. A related bias is the false consensus effect, or the tendency to overestimate the extent to which others share our thoughts and behaviors. Across a wide range of topics, military spending, abortion, gun control, norms for appropriate behavior, People often exaggerate their estimations of how many people share their views. The image on the slide is a tweet from a professor at the Wharton School of Business, a prestigious and expensive institution. In 2022, she asked her students what they thought the average American worker earns per year. Most of them guessed six figures, but the real number is somewhere around $50,000. Their guesses represent the false consensus effect because most of them come from families that make at least six figures. The base rate fallacy occurs when we rely on subjective information, like our instincts, but downplay objective data, like statistics. It helps explain why so many people, including myself, choose to buy lottery tickets when the odds of winning are astronomically low. We are more persuaded by glamorous stories about lottery winners than by probabilities. This is especially true when we hear directly from the winners and when we perceive them to be credible sources of information. Counterfactual thinking is thinking about what might have been and imagining alternative outcomes that could have, but did not occur. Examples include, I wish I would have. Maybe things would be different if I had. What if I had done this instead? The problem with this line of thinking is that we can't change the past and dwelling on it can hurt our self-esteem which can lead to negative emotions like regret, disappointment, and resentment. The psychological impact of a positive or negative event depends on how we think about it. If we imagine an outcome that is better than the real outcome, we'll likely experience negative emotions. But if we think about an outcome that is worse than the real outcome, we'll likely experience more positive emotions like appreciation. The actor-observer effect is the tendency to make personal attributions for others' behaviors, but situational attributions for ourselves. The rationale behind this effect is, when it's happening to us, it's outside of our control, but when it's happening to someone else, it's all their fault. 
For example, a student doesn't study and fails their exam. As the actor, they fail to recognize how their lack of effort resulted in a poor grade, and they blame the situation, suggesting it was just bad luck or the professor's fault. Now, imagine one of their friends also failed the exam. As the observer, they assume their friend is incompetent and failed to consider how their week-long illness may have played a role. Why does this happen? One explanation is that it's difficult for us to see our own actions when we are the actors, but it's easy to see the actions of others when we are on the outside looking in. Another attributional bias that prevents us from seeing people as they are is the in-group bias. This is the tendency to judge people who are similar to us, who are part of our social group, more favorably than people who are perceived to be different. When you meet someone new who looks like you, shares your name, or even enjoys the same hobbies, you will likely judge them a bit more positively than someone who is different from you. Two more biases in this lecture. Wishful seeing is the tendency to see what we want to see. In a study published by Rattle and Clement Gillotin, participants read rapidly presented food words on a computer screen. Some of the participants were hungry when they completed the task. Others had just eaten. The people who were hungry were faster at identifying the food words than the people who were not hungry. In other words, hungry people see food words because they want food. The final attributional bias in this lecture is the belief in a just world. This occurs when we blame other people for their unfortunate circumstances, like the loss of a job or a divorce, because we believe in a just world that punishes bad behavior. Examples include, poor people are lazy, crime victims are careless, abuse victims do something to provoke their partners, and people with STIs are promiscuous. Of course, these stereotypes are not accurate representations of these groups of people. But when this bias is alive and well, we blame bad outcomes on bad behavior that probably doesn't exist. You've learned about a number of biases throughout this lecture. Remember a few things. They affect all of us. They often occur without our awareness. And they can operate simultaneously. In the next part of the lecture, you will explore the integration process and how we form impressions of other people.